Hey guys, Kirk from Acid Bite here, and this time we're going to talk about how to make our burning paper transition. Okay guys, let's see how this is done. First of course you're going to want to start with two pieces of footage that you're going to transition in between. And then you're going to bring your burning paper MOV and place it above them. Now the first thing you need to do is identify where in your edit you want the transition to take place. For me, it's going to be right at the top of this guy's jump. So I'm going to lift up my first piece of footage here, and I'm going to bring my second piece of footage to where I want the transition to begin. Then I'm going to bring over my burning paper, and we want these pieces of footage to overlap for exactly the duration of the burning paper MOV. Now I want to point out something about this burning paper asset that you've downloaded, it comes with a unique uh, piece of sound design here, as do all of our transitions, that accompanies the burning effect. And another unique thing about this is this is a handmade, real burning piece of paper that we shot on green screen. It was shot in 4K, ProRes 444 with Alpha, and it's been pre-keyed as you see here, so you have nothing to worry about. There's only one effect that's needed to create this transition. And if we go up in our effects panel, that effect is called track mat key. And what you need to be aware of before you apply the track mat key effect is that if you've used any of your position or scale controls on this footage, you're going to want to nest that piece of footage before applying the track mat, okay? So what we want to do is grab the track mat key and we're going to place that on top of our first piece of footage, not onto our burning paper. And we're going to go in the track mat key settings and on the, the mat setting, you want to change that to video three. And the reason you're doing that is because the burning paper is on the video three layer. So what the track mat key is going to do is it's going to use the alpha data from that burning paper file and it's going to use that to reveal the second piece of footage that's underneath. Now, if for some reason in your edit it makes more sense to reverse these shots and have the second clip on top, that's okay too. What you want to do is you want to disable the track mat key on the first footage and add it to the second, always to the footage that's on top. Uh, once again, select video 3, but in this construction you want to make sure that you check reverse. After you check reverse, it'll interpret the alpha data correctly so that the right clip is revealed. Now, what you're going to notice is after the burning paper MOV, your second clip here after you check reverse is going to be black. That's okay. What you want to do is come right to the end of the burning paper file and make a cut. And so for the rest of this piece of footage, you want to disable the track mat key. And after you've done that, everything will work fine. Now, another thing that you'll have noticed is that the, the burning, the fire, has actually disappeared since we added the track mat key. That's okay. What you want to do is you want to duplicate your burning paper MOV, and you're going to change the blending mode on this one to screen. And then you'll see that your fire has returned, and you can still see through to this, this layer underneath. Now, if you think that the, the fire is not bright enough or intense enough, you can continue to duplicate this layer as many times as you want, keeping it on screen, and with each duplication, the brightness will increase. Now, I'm going to remove that layer for now and show you another cool thing that you can do to tweak this transition. If you come over here to your Lumetri Color tab and you scroll down to Hue versus Hue, what we want to do is make a selection from the yellow over to the red part of the color spectrum. And we're doing that because that is the color range that your fire is going to be appearing in. Once we've made this selection, we, within the selection, we can start to play with the color of the fire. So if you have something like a music video where you have lots of colored lighting and you want to synchronize this transition with the look of your footage, you can do that by changing it here. Now, in my edit, I think the original is actually the best because it already matches so well with the flaming skateboards. Another cool thing about this asset that you've downloaded 
is that we actually shot it in 48 frames per second. So this means that in, for instance, a 24 frames per second timeline, you can slow the speed of this clip down by 50% and make sure that you hit this maintain audio pitch check mark and it'll fit perfectly into your timeline. There won't be any stuttering or frame drops and you don't need to worry about optical flow or any of that stuff. Uh, an important thing to keep in mind is that you have this burning paper file and this audio file linked because then Premiere will automatically slow down the audio file as well and it will change the pitch the way it's supposed to be. So when audio goes into slow motion, the pitch will drop a little bit. So make sure that you change the speed duration of all of your burning paper files that you've duplicated and readjust your edit so that the transition is the new length and you'll see that you've now doubled the length of the transition. And one final cool feature of this whole effect is that if you select all of your files excluding the first clip and you group them, you can now take this transition and you can move it anywhere in the edit. And because the only thing you're using is the track mat key, it will always work exactly the same. So if you want to show the transition earlier in this shot or later in this shot, it doesn't matter. The transition always works exactly the same. So that's it, guys. It's super easy. It's super powerful. And thank you for downloading and thank you for watching.